the boss's mistress by arian nightingale read by blair watkins i am sophie and i work at a small cafe in the heart of the city it's a simple job but it pays the bills plus i get to interact with all kinds of interesting people today started off like any other day but that was about to change i was just cleaning up a table when he walked in he was tall dark and handsome the kind of guy that made your heart skip a beat as he approached the counter i could feel my cheeks start to flush he had a magnetic presence and i found myself drawn to him good morning miss could i please have a coffee and a croissant he asked with a smile of course i replied trying to keep my cool anything else for you no that's all for now but I might come back for seconds, he added with a playful wink. I couldn't help but laugh at his charming demeanor. There was something about him that made me feel at ease, even though I had just met him. As I handed him his order, he leaned in closer to me. By the way, my name is Antonio, and yours. I'm Sophie. I replied, feeling a jolt of electricity shoot through my body as our hands briefly touched. We exchanged a few more pleasantries, and as he left the cafe, I couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement. There was something special about Antonio, something that made my heart race and my stomach flutter. As I was clearing a table, my co-worker leaned in close to me and whispered, Hey, Sophie, have you heard the rumors about that guy you were just talking to? I raised an eyebrow, wondering what she was talking about. What rumors? I asked. You know, the ones about how he might be involved with some dangerous people. I heard he's connected to the mafia or something, she replied, her voice low and conspiratorial. My heart sank at her words. I had a feeling that Antonio was too good to be true, but at the same time I couldn't help but feel drawn to him. There was something about him that made me feel alive, even if it was a little dangerous. I don't know, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. He seemed nice enough to me. Just be careful, okay? my co-worker warned before scurrying off to attend to another customer. As I went about my duties, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled in the pit of my stomach. What if my co-worker was right? What if Antonio really was involved with dangerous people? But at the same time, I couldn't help but feel a sense of attraction to him. There was something about his dark brooding demeanor that drew me in even if it was a little scary i knew that i should stay away from him but i couldn't resist his pull i wanted to get to know him better to unravel the mystery that surrounded him but at the same time i knew that i was playing with fire the question was was i willing to risk getting burned it had been a month since i had last seen antonio and I was starting to think that maybe it had all been a dream. But then, just as I was finishing up my shift at the cafe, he walked in again. Good evening, Sophie, he said, his voice deep and smooth. You're looking more beautiful than ever. I felt my cheeks flush at his compliment. Thank you, I replied, trying to keep my cool. Listen, I was wondering if you'd like to go out with me tonight, he said his dark eyes twinkling with excitement. I couldn't believe it. Was this really happening? Was Antonio really asking me out on a date? Sure, I said, trying to hide my nervousness. Where are we going? It's a surprise, he replied with a mischievous grin, but I promise you'll love it. And he was right. He took me to the fanciest restaurant I had ever been to, we were seated at a private table in a dimly lit corner of the room, and I felt like I was in a movie. As we sipped our wine, Antonio leaned in closer to me and asked, So, Sophie, tell me about yourself. What do you like to do? I felt my heart race as I thought about how to answer his question. I 
didn't want to sound boring or uninteresting. Well, I just graduated from college a few months ago, I began, trying to keep my nerves at bay. I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with my life yet, but I've been working at the cafe to make ends meet. Antonio listened intently as I spoke, nodding and asking questions to show that he was genuinely interested in what I had to say. That's really cool, he said. I remember when I was your age, I had no idea what I wanted to do either. But then I started traveling, and that's when I realized that there was a whole world out there waiting for me to explore. I felt a twinge of envy as I thought about all the places he must have seen and all the things he must have experienced. What kind of business do you run? I asked, hoping to shift the focus away from myself. I run a few different businesses, actually, he replied, but my main one is in the import-export industry. It's been a wild ride, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I was fascinated by his stories of negotiating deals with foreign clients and navigating the complexities of international trade. There was something about his confidence and expertise that made me feel safe and secure. But then, the conversation turned to our fears and insecurities. I hesitated at first, not sure if I was ready to reveal my innermost thoughts to someone I had just met. But Antonio was so kind and understanding, so easy to talk to, that before I knew it, I was opening up to him in a way that I never had before. I'm scared, I said, my voice barely above a whisper, scared that I'll never find my place in the world, that I'll always be stuck in this dead-end job. Antonio took my hand and squeezed it reassuringly. Sophie... You have so much potential. I can tell that you're smart and ambitious, and I know that you'll find your way eventually. We talked about our fears and insecurities late into the night, our voices growing hoarse as we shared our deepest secrets, and through it all, I felt a deep connection growing between us, a sense that we were kindred spirits. As we walked out of the restaurant, Antonio took my hand and pulled me close to him. I had a wonderful time tonight, Sophie, he said, his voice low and husky. I hope you did, too. I looked up at him, feeling a rush of desire coursing through my veins. I did, I said, breathlessly. I really did. And as I lay in bed that night, my mind Buzzing with excitement, I knew that I had fallen for him, hard. The next morning, I woke up feeling giddy and excited, my mind still reeling from my date with Antonio. But as I sat down at my computer to check my emails, something caught my eye. It was a news article about a high-profile mob boss who had recently been arrested. And as I read through the article, my heart sank. There, in black and white, was a mention of Antonio's name. It was just a passing reference, but it was enough to send a chill down my spine. I knew what I had to do. I had to find out more about Antonio's background to make sure that I wasn't getting myself into something dangerous. I spent the next few hours scouring the internet, digging through old news articles and police records and what I found made my blood run cold. Antonio was indeed connected to the Mafia, deeply involved in a world of crime and violence that I had never even imagined. As I read through the articles and police reports, my heart felt like it was breaking. How could I have been so foolish? How could I have fallen for someone like him? But at the same time, I couldn't deny the pull that Antonio had over me. Despite his criminal ties, I couldn't help but feel drawn to him, to the dangerous and exciting world that he inhabited. I knew that I had to be careful, that I couldn't let myself get too close to him. But at the same time, I couldn't deny the thrill that came with being with someone like him. As I closed my laptop and got ready for work, I knew that my life would never be the same. 
Antonio had opened up a whole new world to me, one that was thrilling and dangerous and full of excitement. And I knew that I couldn't resist his pull no matter how hard I tried. A week later, Antonio called me and asked me to come to a family gathering with him. My heart raced at the thought of meeting his family. What if they didn't like me? But I couldn't resist the pull of Antonio's charm, and so I agreed to go. As we pulled up to his family's estate, I felt a sense of awe wash over me. The mansion was huge, with sprawling gardens and a fountain in the front. I felt like I was stepping into a whole new world. Antonio led me inside, his hand resting reassuringly on the small of my back, and as we entered the living room, I was greeted by the warm smiles of his mother and sister. Sophie, it's so nice to finally meet you, his mother said, her voice gentle and welcoming. I felt a wave of relief wash over me. They seemed so normal, so kind. Maybe my worries had been unfounded after all. Oh, Antonio was quite the little troublemaker when he was young, she said, a twinkle in her eye. I remember one time he snuck out of the house in the middle of the night and climbed up onto the roof. We were all so worried about him, but he just thought it was the most hilarious thing. Antonio chuckled, looking embarrassed but pleased at the same time. I can't believe you remember that, Mom, he said. His mother smiled indulgently. Of course I do. You were always finding new ways to make us worry, like the time you convinced your little sister to paint the walls with peanut butter. Antonio's sister, who was sitting next to me, giggled at the memory. I remember that, she said. I got in so much trouble for that one. We all laughed, the tension of meeting each other for the first time fading away. As his mother continued to tell us stories, I felt a sense of warmth and belonging wash over me. This was what it felt like to be a part of a family, to be welcomed with open arms and accepted for who you were. And as I looked over at Antonio, who was listening intently to his mother's stories, I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and admiration. He was a part of this world, a world of family and love and laughter. And despite all the risks and dangers that came with his criminal ties, I knew that I wanted to be a part of it too. After dinner, Antonio's sister took me on a tour of the gardens, showing me the flowers and trees that she had planted. As we walked through the gardens, Antonio's sister pointed out different types of flowers and trees, telling me about their colors, shapes, and smells. I love gardening, she said, smiling at me. It's one of the few things that helps me relax and forget about my anxiety. I nodded sympathetically. I struggle with anxiety too sometimes, I said. It can be so overwhelming. Antonio's sister looked at me with surprise. Really? You seem so calm and collected, she said. I shrugged. I guess I've just learned how to manage it over the years, but it's always a work in progress. We continued to walk and talk, sharing stories and insights about our lives. And as she opened up to me about her struggles with depression, I felt a deep sense of empathy and connection growing between us. It's not easy, she said her voice low and hesitant, but I'm trying to take it one day at a time, and having Antonio and my family support makes a huge difference. I nodded, feeling a sense of gratitude for being able to share this moment with her. As we walked back towards the house, I felt a sense of peace and contentment wash over me. The night had been full of surprises and unexpected moments, but in the end, it was the simple act of walking through a garden and sharing our stories that had brought us together. It was a deeply emotional experience, one that made me feel like I was part of their family. And as we said our goodbyes at the end of the night, I knew that I had found something special in Antonio.
something that was worth risking everything for. As we drove back to my apartment, Antonio took my hand and squeezed it gently. I'm so glad that you came tonight, Sophie, he said, his voice low and husky. I wanted you to meet my family because I think you're someone special, someone who could be a part of my life for a long time. I felt my heart skip a beat at his words. Could this really be happening? Could I really be falling for someone like Antonio, despite all the risks and dangers that came with him? I stood nervously in front of my apartment door, the keys jangling in my hand. Antonio stood beside me, his dark eyes locked on mine. When he dropped me off, I had impulsively invited him up to my place for a nightcap. As we stepped inside, I couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation wash over me. Antonio was unlike any man I had ever met before, and I was intrigued by him in a way that I couldn't explain. We settled onto my couch, our drinks in hand. The conversation flowed easily between us, and I found myself opening up to him in a way that I never had with anyone else. He listened intently, his eyes never leaving mine. As the night wore on, I couldn't ignore the growing attraction between us. It was like a magnet pulling us together, a force that I couldn't resist. I leaned in closer to him, my heart racing, Antonio, I whispered, my voice barely above a whisper, I feel like there's something between us, something more than just friendship. Antonio's eyes darkened as he looked at me, a silent understanding passing between us, and before I knew it, his lips were on mine, his arms pulling me closer. The kiss was electrifying, sending shockwaves through my body. It was like nothing I had ever experienced before, and I knew that there was no going back from this moment. I looked into Antonio's eyes and saw a deep passion burning within them. His hand cupped the back of my neck, and he pulled me in for another kiss, this one even more intense than the first. I felt myself losing control as his lips explored mine, and his hand began to trail down my back, sending shivers through my body. Without breaking the kiss, Antonio stood up, pulling me up with him. He led me to my bedroom, his hands exploring my body as we went. As we stood in the dimly lit room, Antonio's eyes locked onto mine, and I knew that there was no going back. He slowly undressed me, his hands caressing every inch of my body as he did, and as we tumbled onto the bed, I felt like I was on fire. The night was a blur of passion and desire as we explored each other's bodies with abandon, and as we lay there panting and spent, I knew that there was no turning back from this moment. With Antonio by my side, anything was possible, and as we drifted off to sleep in each other's arms, I knew that this was just the beginning of something truly special. A week had passed since Antonio had taken me to meet his family, and I still couldn't believe how easily I had fallen into his world. Despite my initial reservations about his criminal ties, I found myself unable to resist his charm and the excitement that came with being with someone like him. And so, we began a secret relationship. We would meet up in hidden places, stealing kisses and whispered words of affection whenever we could. It was thrilling and dangerous, and I knew that I was risking everything by being with him. But I couldn't help myself. I was addicted to the way he made me feel. Our next official date was at a fancy restaurant, where we drank expensive wine and shared stories about our pasts. So, Sophie, tell me about your past, he said, his eyes searching mine with a mix of curiosity and intensity. I took a deep breath, feeling the weight of my secrets and past mistakes weighing heavily on me. But something about Antonio made me want to open up to him in a way that I never had before. 
and so I began to tell him about my childhood, about my struggles with poverty and abuse. I told him about my time in foster care, about the things I had seen and experienced that had shaped me into the person I was today. As I finished my story, he reached across the table and took my hand in his. I'm sorry that you had to go through all of that, Sophie, he said, his voice low and filled with empathy. But I'm here now, and I promise to do everything in my power to make sure that you never have to suffer like that again. I felt a lump form in my throat at his words, feeling the weight of his promise and the intensity of his gaze. It was like he could see into the depths of my soul, like he knew all of my secrets, and still accepted me for who I was. And as the night wore on, Antonio took my hand and looked deep into my eyes. Sophie, I know that what we're doing is risky, he said, his voice low and serious. But I can't help the way I feel about you. You're different from anyone else I've ever met. You make me want to be a better man. Despite everything, I knew that I felt the same way about him. I was willing to risk everything for this dangerous, exciting love. And so we continued our secret affair, sneaking around and stealing moments of passion whenever we could. It was a game of cat and mouse, full of danger and excitement, and as we lay in each other's arms at the end of the night, I knew that I was in too deep. But I couldn't help myself. I was addicted to Antonio and the thrill of being with him. It had been a few months since Antonio and I had started our secret relationship, and things were beginning to get dangerous. Antonio's enemies had somehow found out about our relationship, and they began to target me in order to get to him. I would receive threatening messages and phone calls warning me to stay away from him and to leave town if I knew what was good for me. But I refused to be scared off. I loved Antonio, and I was willing to risk everything to be with him. And so we continued our secret meetings always looking over our shoulders and trying to stay one step ahead of his enemies. One night, as we were walking back to my apartment after a date, we heard footsteps following us. I turned around to see a group of men approaching us, their faces masked and their intentions clear. Antonio immediately pulled me close, shielding me from their advances. Stay behind me, Sophie, he said, his voice low and full of warning but I wasn't about to be a damsel in distress. I pulled out the pepper spray that I always carried in my purse and aimed it at the men, warning them to stay back. They hesitated for a moment, but then one of them pulled out a gun, aiming it at Antonio. My heart raced as I watched the scene unfold. I knew that I was in danger, but I also knew that I couldn't just stand by and watch as Antonio was threatened. And so I did the only thing I could think of. I sprayed the pepper spray directly in the face of the man holding the gun, causing him to stumble back and drop his weapon. Antonio took advantage of the distraction, tackling the other men and whisking me away from the fight. As we walked away from the scene, both of us shaken but unharmed, I couldn't help but feel a sense of exhilaration and danger. Being with Antonio was like being in the middle of a thrilling movie, full of twists and turns and danger at every turn. As I sat alone in my apartment, I couldn't help but feel the weight of my decisions weighing heavily on my mind. Being with Antonio had been thrilling and dangerous, but it had also come with a heavy price. I knew that he was involved in criminal activities, and that his enemies would stop at nothing to bring him down, and I couldn't help but wonder what that meant for me and for our future together. Was I willing to risk everything for this dangerous love? Was I willing to overlook the moral implications of being involved with a mafia figure? 
As I sat with my thoughts, I couldn't help but feel a sense of guilt and shame wash over me. I knew that my friends and family would never approve of my relationship with Antonio, and that I was putting myself and my future in danger. But despite everything, I couldn't bring myself to end things with him. I loved him, and I knew that he loved me, and that was all that mattered. As I lay in bed that night, I couldn't help but feel a sense of uncertainty and fear. But I also knew that I couldn't just walk away from the only man who had ever made me feel truly alive. And so I made a decision. I would continue to be with Antonio no matter the cost, because with him I knew that I was truly living, and in a world where danger lurked around every corner, that was all that really mattered. One night, as we were sitting in his living room, Antonio suddenly turned to me and took my hand in his. Sophie, there's something that I need to confess to you, he said his voice low and full of regret. It's something that I've never told anyone before, but I can't keep it a secret any longer. I took a deep breath, feeling a sense of unease wash over me. What could be so terrible that he had to confess it to me? What is it, Antonio? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Antonio looked down at his hands, his eyes filled with pain and regret. I've killed an innocent man, Sophie, he said, his voice barely audible. My heart skipped a beat at his words, feeling a sense of fear and disbelief wash over me. How could he have done something so terrible? Why? I asked, my voice shaking with emotion. Antonio took a deep breath, his eyes meeting mine with a sense of urgency. It was a long time ago, before I met you, he said. I got into a fight in a bar. It got out of hand. I didn't mean for it to happen, but I killed him. My family covered it up. I felt a sense of horror wash over me, feeling the weight of his words and the danger that they represented. I had always known that Antonio was involved in something dangerous, but I had never imagined that it would be something like this. Antonio, how could you? I asked, my voice filled with anger and hurt. Antonio reached out to touch my hand, his eyes pleading for forgiveness. I know that it's a terrible thing, Sophie, he said. But I'm trying to make amends. I'm trying to be a better man for you and for myself. Uncertainty washed over me, unsure of how to react to his confession. But despite everything, I knew that I loved him and I was willing to take the risk. Antonio, I don't know what to say, I said, my voice filled with emotion. But I believe in you. I know that you can be a better man, for me and for yourself. As we sat in silence, I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease and fear wash over me. But I also knew that I was in too deep and that I couldn't just walk away from the man that I loved. Because with Antonio I knew that anything was possible, even forgiveness. I was sitting in my living room when my phone rang. It was my best friend, Sarah, and I could tell from her voice that she was upset. Sophie, we need to talk, she said, her voice serious and full of concern. What's wrong, Sarah? I asked, feeling a sense of unease wash over me. It's Antonio, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. I've heard some rumors about him, and I'm really worried about you. I felt a lump form in my throat at her words, knowing that she had always been suspicious of my relationship with Antonio, but despite everything I knew that I loved him. Sarah, I know that you're worried, I said, my voice filled with emotion. But I love Antonio, and I know that he loves me. We're happy together. But Sophie, he's involved with the Mafia, she said, her voice rising with anger. He's dangerous, and you could be in danger too. Don't you see that? 
I felt a sense of frustration wash over me, knowing that Sarah just didn't understand. I know that he's involved with the Mafia, Sarah, I said, my voice filled with conviction. But he's trying to change. He's trying to be a better man for me and for himself. Sarah let out a sigh, her voice softening. Sophie, I just don't want to see you get hurt, she said. You're my best friend, and I care about you. Please be careful. As we hung up the phone, I couldn't help but feel a sense of uncertainty wash over me. Was I really in too deep with Antonio? Was I putting myself in danger by being with him? As we finished our dinner that night, Antonio leaned in close to me, his hand brushing against mine. Would you like to take a bath with me? He whispered, his voice sending shivers down my spine. I felt my cheeks flush with heat as I looked into his deep, dark eyes. The idea of being so intimate with him was both thrilling and terrifying. But as he took my hand and led me to the bathroom, I couldn't resist the pull between us. I wanted him more than anything, and I was willing to take a chance. As he turned on the water, I looked around the luxurious bathroom, taking in every detail. The marble floors, the clawfoot tub, the candles flickering on the countertop. It was like something out of a dream. Antonio's eyes met mine, and I felt a jolt of electricity run through me. His hand reached out to me, and he pulled me close, his lips meeting mine in a searing kiss. As we broke away, he began to undress me slowly, his hands exploring every inch of my body. And as I stood there naked in front of him, I felt like I was on fire. He helped me into the tub, his hands guiding me down into the steaming water, and as he settled in beside me, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. It was like all the worries and fears of the outside world had melted away, and all that was left was this moment between us. We talked for hours, sharing our hopes and dreams our fears and insecurities, and as the night wore on, I knew that I had fallen for him completely. As we got out of the bath, Antonio dried me off with a fluffy towel, his hands lingering on my skin, and he led me to his bedroom. He pulled me in for another kiss, his lips gentle yet demanding. I felt a sense of urgency between us, a desire that was impossible to ignore. Antonio's touch was electric as he explored my body with his hands, his lips trailing kisses down my neck and chest. I couldn't help but moan with pleasure as he teased me, bringing me to the brink of ecstasy again and again. And as we made love, I felt a deep connection growing between us. It was like our bodies were perfectly in sync, moving together in a dance of passion and desire. As we lay there, spent and sated, Antonio pulled me close, his arms wrapped around me protectively. I lay in bed next to Antonio, the weight of my anxieties pressing down on me. I couldn't help but worry about the dangers that came with being involved with someone in the Mafia, and I knew that I needed to talk to Antonio about it. Antonio, can we talk about something? I asked tentatively, my voice barely above a whisper. He looked at me with a furrowed brow. What is it, Sophie? I'm just worried about your involvement in the Mafia. It's dangerous, and I don't know if I can handle it. Antonio's eyes darkened, and I could feel his body tense up beside me. I've told you before, Sophie. I do what I have to do to protect myself and my family. I know, but... I just can't help but feel scared. What if something happens to you? Antonio's voice rose in anger. Don't be ridiculous, Sophie. I can take care of myself. And if you can't handle that, maybe this isn't going to work out. Suddenly, Antonio's hand shot out and grabbed my arm tightly, causing me to yelp in pain. I tried to pull away, but he held on tightly, his grip growing stronger by the second. 
Let go, Antonio. You're hurting me, I cried out, trying to break free. But he wouldn't release me, and in that moment I knew that I needed to get out of there. I scrambled out of bed and gathered my things as quickly as I could, my heart racing in my chest. I can't do this anymore, Antonio, I said, my voice shaking with fear. I need to leave. Sophie, I'm so sorry, he said, his voice laced with emotion. I shouldn't have let my temper get the best of me. I never meant to hurt you. I looked at him, unsure of what to say. Part of me wanted to forgive him, to fall into his arms and forget all the dangers that came with being involved with a mafia figure. But another part of me was scared, scared of what could happen if I let him stay in my life. Antonio, I don't know if I can do this anymore, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. I need to know that I'm safe, and I don't know if I can be with someone involved in such dangerous activities. Antonio's eyes pleaded with me, his voice desperate. Sophie, please, I'll do anything to make this right. I'll make sure you're safe. I'll do whatever it takes. I fled into the night, my mind racing with thoughts of what could have happened if I had stayed. And as I walked away from Antonio's house, I knew that I would never look back. I was walking to my car after a late shift at work when suddenly everything went dark. A pair of strong arms grabbed me from behind, and I felt a cloth pressed over my mouth and nose. The world spun around me as I tried to fight back, but everything went black. When I came to, I was in a small, windowless room, tied to a chair. My heart raced as I struggled against the ropes, trying to free myself. But the more I struggled, the tighter they became. Suddenly, the door opened, and a group of men walked in, their faces obscured by masks. And at the head of the group, I saw their leader. He was a towering, menacing figure with piercing eyes and a cruel smile that sent shivers down my spine. Well, 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 he said, his voice cold and menacing. Look what we have here, Antonio's little girlfriend. I felt a sense of fear wash over me as he spoke, knowing that I was in grave danger. But despite everything, I knew that I had to be strong. What do you want? I asked, my voice steady despite the fear that I felt. The man laughed, his eyes glinting with malice. What do we want? We want revenge, my dear, he said. For all the things that Antonio has done to us, and we thought that you would make the perfect bargaining chip. I felt a sense of horror wash over me at his words, knowing that I was caught in the middle of a dangerous game. But despite everything, I knew that I had to stay strong. Antonio will come for me, I said, my voice filled with conviction. And when he does, you'll regret ever laying a finger on me. The man laughed again, his eyes filled with contempt. We'll see about that, he said, before slamming the door shut and leaving me alone in the darkness. As I sat there, tied to the chair, I knew that the only thing that I could do was wait. Just as I was losing hope, I heard the unmistakable sound of gunshots outside. The door burst open and Antonio charged in, guns blazing. The room erupted into chaos as the rival gang fought back, bullets flying everywhere. Antonio pulled me behind him, shielding me from the danger as we made our way towards the exit. But just as we thought we were in the clear, another group of men blocked our path. We were trapped with no way out. Antonio sprang into action, taking on the men with his bare hands. I watched in awe as he fought with all his might, his muscles bulging with exertion. Adrenaline coursed through our veins as we burst out of the building, guns blazing behind us. Antonio's hand was tight around mine as we ran towards a black sedan parked nearby. He fished out the keys from his pocket, clicking the button to unlock the doors. 
we jumped into the car and Antonio revved the engine, peeling out of the parking lot and onto the dark streets. As we drove away from the danger and chaos, Antonio's face was grim and serious. I could tell he had something important to say. Sophie, you have to understand. You'll never be safe in this town. Not as long as I'm involved in this life, he said, his voice low and urgent. I felt a lump form in my throat as I realized what he was saying. We couldn't stay here. We had to leave everything behind and start over. But where will we go? I asked, my voice shaking with fear and uncertainty. Antonio took my hand, squeezing it tightly. Anywhere, everywhere, we'll go wherever we have to, to keep you safe. But we have to leave now before they come after us again. As we drove through the night, the reality of our situation hit me. I was leaving everything behind, my job, my friends, my entire life, to be with a man who was involved in the dangerous world of the Mafia. But as scared as I was, I knew deep down that I couldn't live without him. I was willing to do whatever it took to be with him, even if it meant leaving everything behind and starting over from scratch. Together, we drove into the unknown, our future uncertain but our love stronger than ever. Thank you for listening to this production of The Boss's Mistress by Aria Nightingale, read by Blair Watkins. Please let us know if you would like to hear more.